In this video, I want to get prepared to do the servo motor tuning. I'm going to get the limit switches installed and the software configured, and I'm going to get the laser head mounted along with all the cables and hoses. Um, so we'll have all the mass on the gantry before we do the tuning. So let's go. Now that the motor is wired up and there's going to be lots of testing and tuning and moving things around, I think it's a good time to go ahead and hook up this wire that's remote. Looks like it just hooks up via USB. So let me just plug this in and start up the software and see if it works or if we have to do anything. I got it plugged into my mini PC, but it looks like it's working. That was easy. I did a Google image translate on the button labels. For the characters that I can't read, I'll probably print me out some labels and stick on the buttons. I just found something pretty cool. I was poking around in the Ray Tools configuration software and I found that you can configure the uh, K buttons of the remote to be custom features, so that's pretty cool. So on this controller, you can wire up in-stop switches for positive and negative of each axis, as well as a homing switch. I'm just gonna hook up uh, three homing switches, one for each axis, and then uh, set up the soft limits. All right, we have some mounts. I've got uh, three mechanical switches here. I've designed and 3D printed some mounts for them. And I have some shielded wire here. So let me get this all hooked up. I've got the switches all attached to their mounts. Some drop-in T-nuts on there on all of them. So let's get them attached to the machine. The Y-axis switch is gonna mount on this back rail so that this back of the uh, X gantry plate will activate it. So I think I'll put it somewhere right there. You can fine tune it later. If you can see better, there's the switch. It's gonna hit on the plate right here and backs up into it. The Z-axis will home in the upwards direction. So this is gonna drop right in this channel. Right there. And it will hit this plate as it moves up. Here's a closer look. It'll hit on this plate as it moves up right here. Okay, now let's do the X-axis. Here you can see it mounted to in this Z extrusion. And that's gonna move over and bump into this plate. All right, so they're all in position. Let me do some wiring here and we'll get them all hooked up. Got all my wires run for the switches. There's the X and the Z and the Y. And they're all coming out down here. Now we need to wire them up to the controller. Thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and clean up everything I have so far. So you can see I have a uh, wrapped up all my excess servo motor wires over there and all my ethernet cables over there. So it's not amazing, but it's better and it's probably about as good as it's gonna get with uh, having extra long cables. All right, so we can go ahead and I've got these run over here so we can get these wired up to the inputs. I've got my home main switches wired. So let's uh, have a look at the configuration software and see if they're working properly. I pulled up the IO monitor. So let me manually trigger the, all the homing switches and let's see if they activate. All right, this is the Z axis. All right, looks like it's triggering. Now the X. All right, that looks like it's working. Now the Y. All right, that looks good. All right, let me set up the homing sequence in the software. For setting up the homing sequence, it was a matter of uh, going to this XY back origin tab, um, setting the direction and the speed, and then uh, how much to pull, how much distance to pull off of that, and then what you want the coordinate to be set after that. Um, so I set those up there for the X and Y, and then the Z axis follow tab um, has the same parameters here. So I set all them, and now it knows. Uh, uh, how to home and the soft limits work by um, setting the range right here in the soft limit range. So after it uh, homes, then it knows how far it can travel after that. Right here and here. One of the last things we need to do before we can tune the servos is get this BM110 head installed so that uh, we have all the weight on there that's going to be there. So thank you again to Skyfire for sponsoring this. 
If you haven't yet, check out Skyfire's website at ilariastore.com. Based on my research over the past couple years, I've still not found a laser component supplier with better pricing. They also have excellent communication skills, and they've been very helpful offering guidance and feedback on my project, and they've been a pleasure to work with so far. They sell laser components, complete machines, and they offer repair services. They've also really been making a great attempt to cater towards DIYers by making component checklists with supporting YouTube videos and offering different component packages for building your machine. So not only is Skyfire sponsoring the laser head for this project, they're also offering all my viewers a 5% discount on laser component purchases. Um, just use the discount code below uh, when making your purchase. And uh, on top of that, they're also um, giving me a small commission on those purchases, which really helps to support the channel. So be sure to check them out. Okay, it's installed. Okay, so I found the first flaw in my design. There's a port on the back here for nozzle cooling and it's got this elbow fitting that I didn't realize was there. You can see it's gonna interfere with this plate whenever it comes down. So I need to see if there's either enough room to cut a little notch out of this plate for it to pass, or I need to add a spacer to bring this out just a little bit from the mounting plate. Looks like Maybe about four millimeters might be enough. Um, so anyways, well, that's a bummer, but um, we can still uh, do the servo tuning and I'll figure out what kind of solution I want to do for that. Let's go ahead and install the amplifier on here also so we have the weight of that. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cable on too before I lose it. I have three cables here. Um, one is, well, it looks like the connector for the capacitive sensor on the laser head. Another one is uh, the servo power for the focusing on the laser head. And the other one is to uh, send the control signals. So let's just get these plugged in and, and run through the drag chains to the back. Let's see what this one gets plugged into here. I got this one run through the drag chain. So it goes like so. Now I have the cable run through for the capacitive sensor. That looks pretty good for now. Now let's uh, work on the back side. Look how much extra wire we have. I really hate to have to cut these and re-splice everything. So I might just coil them up and stick them back up underneath the machine where they'll be out of the way. Let's start with the capacitive sensor cable. Um, I've coiled up all my excess and pushed it up there to the front of the machine where it's kind of out of the way of everything. I've run it through the cable raceway up to here. And it plugs in right here on the controller. Coiled up the other green cable. That should be the encoder cable for the motor. So it looks like it's just gonna plug in right here and see in two on the driver. And we just have the orange cable. Uh, I believe this has the, uh, the motor power and the limit switches. The controller also came with this cable, which I believe is ready to go to hook to the CN1 of this drive to the F axis. I've got all the orange wires coiled up there at the back and it's running through the cable raceway coming out right here. And so now I just uh, need to figure out where all those hook up. Looks like it's to the focus positive and negative limit switches and power for the motor. These four wires get connected up to the driver right here. So let me undo this plug. And these get hooked up to the limit switch. There's one more to hook up to 24 volts. It should be done. Okay, I've pulled up the software here to configure the laser head motor. And it's nice, you can just, there's like presets in here. So I can pick my model, VM110. And it looks like it pulls up all the info I need in here already. So let me save that. I'll double check to make sure this is all correct. 
it looks like it's moving the focus motor. If I click this F over here, I can press the plus and minus and I can see the dial moving. I'll show you here on the camera. So Skyfire has saved the day. I told them my problem here and they offered a really easy solution. They said that since I'm only running a thousand watt laser, um, that I don't actually need the nozzle cooling here. They told me I can just simply remove this and put a plug in there and then I'll have plenty of clearance. So that's what I'm going to do. They said the nozzle cooling was more for when cutting thicker material with oxygen, uh, with laser sources in the six to 12,000 watt range. Um, the nozzle can generate a lot of heat and thus needs the cooling. I've ordered a little plug for it. So let me get that installed. Let's start hooking up some hoses. I have this six millimeter tube for the water cooling for the laser head. Uh, it's gonna run in here and go down to this side, then down to this side, and then come out here. So I'll, I'll first cut off my little pieces and make these connections, and then I'll see how much hose I have left. Cut it in half and run the other two lines back through the drag chain. Here we go. Should work. Now for this one. Cool. Now I'll just cut the rest of my tube in half. Well, first I'll make sure it's long enough and then see if I can cut it in half and run the input and output through the drag chain. Got my first hose run through here. I guess we'll consider this the input. I'll label that with a piece of tape on the other side so I know. I've got my second hose run here. We'll hook this up to the output line. All right, cool. That should be good to go. On this end, I need to do a little hose wire management here to clean all this up. The last hose we need to run for the laser head is for the gas assist. And I got some hose here, but uh, now that I'm holding it, it feels way too rigid. I think I need to find something else that's more flexible. So I'm gonna hold off on that for a minute. I've got some uh, new 10 millimeter hose that's a little more flexible. So let me run this through the drag chain and then we'll get it hooked up to the laser. I've got the hose run through the drag chain. So let's get it plugged in here. All right, there it goes. All right, so let me see what I can do about uh, containing all these hoses. I found I had some one inch split loom. Uh, so I installed that over some of the cables here. I think that will do better than nothing. Um, so everything's hooked up to the laser head now, except for the optical cable, but we'll get to that in a little bit. To support the optical cable, I'm gonna use a spring steel again. Um, this worked really well in this machine. Um, it has a minimum bend radius of 200 millimeters, I believe, so it can't go through the drag chain. I've bought a fish tape again. Um, I'll just pull it all out here and cut it into, it seemed like four layers of it provided a nice amount of resistance and support. I've got my fish tape laid out with a tape measure. I need to cut this into four or seven foot lengths. Okay, I have my four ply of spring steel here. Got things down here to position. And I have this little laser cut bracket. I'll probably have to trim these shorter, but for now I'm just gonna Try to attach them on one end here so I can see how much travel it's going to need. See if I can put this on here. So what I need to do is power the machine on so I can kind of jog it to the all four corners and up and down and make sure this has a good amount of travel to reach everywhere, but yet not too much that hopefully it doesn't want to poke through the top. I've zip tied it to this uh, motor spacer right here and I think it's at a pretty good length when I jog around to all the corners, and about as high as it can go without hitting the top of the enclosure. So 
So I think I'm going to try that. I'm going to cut it off to length there and probably just zip tie it to the motor for now. Probably cut it off like right here and then uh, zip tie it more securely there. I'm about ready to install the optical cable. And um, I was just thinking before I do that, in the event that there was ever some kind of error and the X gantry tried to move back too far, all the way back to this uh, back extrusion, this angle iron right here is gonna act like a knife and destroy the optical cable. So I think I'm gonna make a hard stop um, to go around the optical cable right here um, where that'll hit. So in the event that there is some kind of error, um, hopefully at least it'll stop it from damage that damaging that optical cable. So let's make a part. I got my stock loaded and it seems to be fairly centered. I have a lot of stick out here, um, so I made my cam file fairly conservative, I think. So let's send it and see how it goes. It did not turn out amazing. I'm still learning how to set up the fourth axis cam files and I had it plunging right into the material. By the looks of it, I didn't get my origin point set exactly at the center rotation of the vise. So I'll have to work on that for next time, but it uh, looks like all the critical features are okay, so we can still use the part. All right, so it's gonna go right here. Uh, I've left this uh, channel in the back that's gonna sit right over the spring steel. And then the optical cable will fit right into that slot. And so hopefully this will be a hard stop that will, you know, stop the gantry should it ever try to crash into it and protect the cable. I've added some drop-in T-nuts, so let's get this installed. Okay, it looks like it's going to work. A couple people mentioned that I should make a cover for this line filter so that these terminals aren't exposed. And it's a great idea. So that's what I'm doing. I've designed a, a part and I'm 3D printing these caps that go over the terminals here so I can cover those up. All right, that's a little better. Skyfire brought up the point that if there ever happens to be a water leak in any of my hoses for the cooling, um, you know, it could leak and damage this wood base. And uh, I've never had a problem with my other machine, but I thought while everything's open, it would be easy enough to just throw down a layer of white vinyl to protect it in case that ever happens. So I'm doing that real quick. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Now, if we ever have a leak, uh, we should be protected. Okay, that's all we have time for today. I think we're pretty well set to tune the motors next time. Thanks again to Skyfire for supporting this project. Be sure to check out their website and don't forget to use the code for a discount. And thank you to all my patrons for supporting my channel and making these projects happen. Thank you guys.